Joining me now is UFC lightweight Kama Worthy. What's up, man? I appreciate the time today. Not a problem, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely anytime. So you are always rocking an awesome mohawk before your UFC <laughs> fight. My question to you is, I know you can't see my hair right now, but do you think I could pull that hair, uh, hairstyle off? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, anyone can pull it off. It's, it's you got to, like, it's like, you, I, I, don't, I don't really wear them except for when I fight because it's a really aggressive <laughs> hairstyle. So you got to really, like, be prepared to, to, like, get the energy that comes behind the mohawk. <laughs> Mark Casey, uh, I believe he usually has like a red mohawk. What color, if I were to do mine, should I? Should it be like a purple and orange? What should it be? Yeah, like a pink one. I actually thought about doing mine silver for one fight a while ago and doing like a demolition stat man style thing. I was going to do that for my second UFC fight. I thought about doing that. I still might actually do it. It depends. Kama, I think that you should do it. <laughs> So something I read about you, something super cool, is you were a model before fighting. Uh, you have to tell me that story, please. Yeah, I um, I lived in New York. Uh, it was just, I, I, I lived in Pittsburgh before I moved out to New York. And it was just something, I just wanted to just do something different. I didn't want to go to school. And someone offered it to me. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll just do that. So I did like runway shows, a couple of print work and stuff. So I, mean, I didn't do like major, major stuff. I did a couple of bigger stuff, and and usually I did mostly of my runway work. Ah, those runway shows—they probably help with your walkout on the way to the octagon, don't they? Yeah, you know, you get you get comfortable under pressure. I guess you can say. <laughs> Where were you spotted? Was it like a mall or something? Yeah, actually, um, the lady she saw me at a mall, and then they were doing. They were actually the mall was actually putting on a show. And she asked me to do that show in two weeks, and I did that show. And then they said they had a house in New York, and if I wanted to move up there, like, what I would need and stuff. So I, like, saved up for, like, a couple of weeks and just moved, and then and the rest was history. So Damn. I'm kind of like that. I like, if I think I want to do something, I just go and do it. I don't like procrastinating, like, kind of take time and get through Because next thing you know, you turn around, and you're fucking 40 or something. You kept talking about you are going to do this thing, and it never happened because you never really got to it. So if I say I want to do something, I just go ahead and do it. That's a great way to live. At the end of the day, you're right. Life is too short, man. You just got to follow yeah, man. You follow. That's so fucking true because you'll, you'll turn around and be old and be like, oh, shit, I never did it. So <laughs> Here's the thing. So I interviewed Alec Musser, who was uh, in Grown Ups, the movie, and he's a model. You know, he, that dude has – he's jacked. He has like a 12-pack. I, you know, myself, I'm a chess player. I don't have a 12-pack. I have a 12-pack on the brain. I wish, <laughs> I wish I could be in a mall and someone would just approach, or, you know, shirtless on the beach and someone would approach me and be like, listen, woman, you should be a model. Damn, but I've not got that yet, Kamo. Uh, <laughs> Maybe if I get a silver mohawk, right? Right, yeah, there you go. That, 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 that'd definitely kick it up. You'd be an angry model. <laughs> Talking about uh, modeling, sort of, I did see your Manscaped photo on your Instagram, and I must say, <laughs> you have scared me for life. <laughs> <laughs> So many people, like, what the hell? I'm like, yeah, man. Like, uh, my management team, they said they asked me to do a thing, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. So I just went with, I went, I went with the funny. Like, that's how Manscaped's commercials are, though. They're like kind of extreme and kind of like over top. So it's kind of like, I think that's the whole. That was the whole point. People are like, what the hell? I'm like, the whole point was to make it like that. So. I was one of those I people, think, I have to tell you. I think I think I achieved what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to agree with you there. Something else I read is you're a jewelry maker, a painter, a drummer. Uh, so since you're clearly good at everything, is there anything you're not good at? Um, a whole bunch. I mean, it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I, just, I just like to try different stuff. I, I like to try different stuff and, like, kind of, like, test myself out in different things. So I, I'll do a lot of different stuff depending on uh, – what time of day it is. <laughs> is there anything that, that you'd like to uh, try next that you haven't done yet? Uh, yeah, I want to do like Formula One racing. I want to do that when I'm done fighting. That's what I want to do when I'm done fighting. I want to try it out and maybe see if I can make a career out of it. You can do that when you're older. It doesn't matter. So I want to do that later on. Damn. You know what I used to be a beast at? Those NASCAR video games. I, I, really? <laughs> I always spun my car around and crashed everybody. But on like these new NASCAR games, it won't let me do it anymore. Really? Huh? So I haven't, I haven't played any, um, any uh, new games, video games in a long time. Uh, well, if you ever want to challenge me in the UFC game, uh, I, I will beat you up, Kama. I will. That's, that's what people keep telling. I'm like, yo, but someone, another fighter was asking about the UFC game. I'm like, yo, 
all I do is train and shit. So the last thing I want to do is sit down and like fucking train the video game. I'm like, nah, I'm good, man. <laughs> I totally understand. So you fought Paul Felder back in 2012. Uh, did you watch his most recent fight against RDA? Yes. What were your thoughts? I he, he actually did good for a four day notice. Shit, he did really good. He, he said he hadn't been in the gym in like four year, four months or some shit. He hasn't stepped foot in the MMA gym in four months. I'm like, oh, that was a pretty impressive performance. I mean, you can tell it was kind of like he had a couple of glitches in in like the timing and distance and stuff. But besides that, he looked like he was, didn't get tired. Like that was it was pretty good. And, Pretty impressive performance. Yeah, that dude is a badass. Now, it must be cool to look back. Think about where you guys were in 2012, and then look at where you both are now. That must be such a uh, great feeling, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, that's that's the martial arts part of martial arts. Like, you know, it's all about the journey rather than, like, just where you're at at the time. So, I mean, like, you can't – even even where you're at now, even where I'm at now, where he's at now, you can't really dwell on that too much because it's going to be of a different path as you keep moving forward. So, that's the fun part of it. Yeah. You know, in 2012, I covered, I was uh, 11 years old. I covered Strike Force Henderson versus Babalu. It was the first MMA event I had ever covered. That was the year I fell in love with mixed martial arts. Jeez. That was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> we have to talk about your most recent fight briefly. Lost in September by knockout to Otman. What are some things you took away from that fight? What did you learn? Um, I kind of like that, that fight. Like, it's. For me personally, I I learned like you have to just kind of like let things happen as they happen and not trying to force things. I was like, the fight before that, I didn't have a problem with the no audience and no crowd. And then that fight, I think it for some reason it it would it it was just kind of a weird feeling, I feeling for some reason. I'm not too sure, but I mean like that's part of the fight game. Like like every time you think you have things figured out, there's a new monkey wrench tossed in. It's like this whole thing, this whole reason we're like how we're fighting now with the no crowd. It 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 can some like I said my my fight with Pinion had no effect. I thought I fought, that last fight I was paying I was analyzing everything in the mo like in the moment instead of the fight itself. I was analyzing the like the non crowd the way the fat the way the freaking cage felt like I could hear people outside like commenting and talking. It was it was weird. I was over analyzing everything. So just to relax and kind of sit back and let things kind of play themselves out more. So moving forward, you'll just kind of uh, take a deep breath, relax, and to, to basically ensure that it won't happen again? Um, I tell you, do the total opposite, and I'm just not going to try to plan shit out too much. Like, you, I, I was trying to figure out too much, like, what I'm going to do after this fight, what's going to happen after this, like this and that. Like, there's too much going on. What happens if I lose? What happens if I win? I had all, I was playing all that out in my head instead of actually just dealing with what was happening. So... And, and, and for my next fight, I was just going to go out there and just fight, yeah. not worry oh. about what's happening or what's going on or anything else. I totally understand. Which is that easier to said than done. Right. Yeah, I would, I would totally love to see a rematch in the future. Now, I, I know you were kind of really in the moment, but being co-main event and really your third UFC fight, that must have been a pretty nice feeling as well. It was. I mean, like, and that's the thing. I was, I was overthinking that itself. I was like thinking about, I was thinking about that rather than the fight. Like, oh, this, and then like, oh, top fifteen. It was this. There was just so much going on. I was over, over grasping at. Like, I didn't like downplay the fight, but I was over grasping at the, at the, at the like actions of the fight rather than the actual fight itself. So then, like, I was over. Like, my brain wasn't really in the moment for the fight. At least that's how I felt and stuff. Gotcha. Well, one of my favorite fights of yours was against Devontae Smith. You were an enormous underdog in that fight. I remember I watched that fight live, uh, and I loved watching you prove everyone wrong. That, that was a remarkable fight. <laughs> yeah, it was, man. It's fun times. <laughs> <laughs> and then you beat Luis Pena, as you had said. You, were, you weren't obviously nearly as much as an underdog in that fight, but being an underdog, does that kind of bother you, or is it kind of like fuel and ammunition? No, I don't think about it. It doesn't really doesn't really do much of anything for me personally. I don't really overthink it, underthink it. Like, so I try to like, cause again, that's something else you take into a fight that has nothing to do with the fight itself. It's and like you, you taking too many things like that or consume the actual fight and you'll, you'll, you'll be dealing with that instead. Is there anything typically that you do before a fight that gets you in that right state of mind? Um, no, I'm not like a ritual type person that does like, oh, I'm going to do this or I got a dirty pair of underwear that I wear or stuff like that or shit like that. I'm like, nah, I just kind of like let it come and just kind of deal with it as it comes. Awesome. Well, what is next for you? I did see a post on your Twitter uh, that you're hoping to get in the cage in December. What's next? Where are some of those short-term goals? 
Yeah, um, I, I, I want to get one more fight in this year and uh, and then at least get four more fights in next year. Uh, uh, yeah, me and my me and my manager, we've been talking, so hopefully we'll we'll get something for December. I know they're still putting together a lot of cards in December. I think there's a twelfth, nineteenth, uh, I think the uh twenty fifth through, or I think or twenty sixth. I think they're all putting fights together for those or something. So um, hopefully we get something up real soon and I'll get some get back in there and get back to work. I know that this is the common question that you're always asked. Is there anyone on your radar? Um, not really. I mean, like, uh, like me and Brock Waver had talked a couple of times, uh, there a steamroller, uh, uh, Provola, I know he had said he wanted something. And then like, there's a couple of, I'm, I'm, but there's like a fucking 155 fucking 55 or so there's too many people. Like, I don't, I don't know. Just whoever they put in front of me. Well, that ever, you know, being that it is such a rich division, I mean, there are a lot, it's a very saturated division. Would you ever move up or down, uh, you know, just for like closer, uh, t- to the title, really? No, I, I definitely won't move up. Those motherfuckers are huge. And uh, moving down, I don't know. Like that's like I, th- I, I think it wears on my body a little bit to get down to forty-five a little bit too much. Like at fifty-five, I'm I'm pretty sucked out then. So I'm yeah. I don't I don't know. I, me and my coaches have kind of talked about it, but not at the time. No, I'm actually getting a little bit bigger at the time. So. Um, no, nah, I'll be I'll probably, I'll be at 55 for me until I start getting like old, really old, and don't feel like cutting weight. And like, hey, I'll just fight at 170. But those guys at 170 are fucking huge. I'm like, yeah, like yo, oh, I have to be like the right fight. Like I, I would fight like um, Nate Diaz at 170 because he's a smaller 170 pounder, like or like maybe even Cowboy at 170 or something. But like not not some a real 170 pounder, nah. Like, I would I'm love not fighting to see one. Cowboy. I would love to see that fight, 100%. Yeah, Cowboy, as you see, is coming down to 55, so that can be a potential fight, hopefully sometime, maybe in next year or something, whatever, because he's he just made a post. He said he's uh, reinvigorated and he's ready to come back down to 55. I'm like, oh, sweet. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. For your next fight, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that, Gray Mohawk. I've been thinking about it. I got this whole interview. <laughs> Listen, I've tried so many different hairstyles. I tried growing my hair out uh, into the mullet, but my hair grew like this, and we can't have that going on. <laughs> and then, of course, I shaved my head, and the, sh- the shaving of the head just made my hey, – um, it really just made my head look like an egg. And so that's <laughs> what I'm And so now I'm just sticking with the hat, but a gray mohawk, I mean, what do I have to worry about? Yeah, exactly, man. I mean, like, like, seriously, I think it'd be kind of cool. Gray all out, everyone's wearing masks and stuff, so it'd be kind of cool with the mask, gray mohawk, kind of creepy. <laughs> Except I have a practicum. I have my social work practicum coming up at a St. Louis Children's Hospital. I don't know how that there will you work. Go. I don't know how there that will work. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> They'll never forget me. They may hire me just because of my lovely hairstyle. Exactly. <laughs> Kama, I appreciate the time. Uh, you're awesome. I'm going to leave the floor to you. Anyone you'd like to thank, how can people find you on Instagram, Twitter, all those other social media apps? Um, yeah, I can thank all my fans, uh, students at my gym and stuff. Uh, you can find me at the Death Star underscore one on uh, all my social media. Uh, Facebook is just regular Kama Worthy. Instagram and Twitter, Death Star underscore one. Uh, um, Snapchat, I think um, I don't really use Snapchat too much. I think it's Kama on one or some shit like that. Yeah, something like that. But you, you know, you get me on, uh, get me up on Instagram or stuff. I talk to fans and stuff, interact with people. So, yeah.